Good morning, Lee Brower here and welcome to this week's edition of Meaningful Monday. I am grateful to be here and I am glad to be here. In fact, I'm ecstatic to be here and I'm humbled to be here. This last weekend we had our 12th annual Wacky Charitable Softball Tournament, a girls tournament. We had over 300 girls participating, competing. I'm going to tell you about the word compete. The word compete, when you go back to the root word, means to work alongside of each other. And you know what we had? No, let me tell you what we didn't have in this tournament. We didn't have coaches yelling at the umpires. We didn't have parents yelling at the coaches. We didn't have fights between one team or another team. We only had the true spirit of competing, of actually working together alongside of each other. There's a, there's a, there's a quote that I'm particularly fond of. I shared it with you a couple of years ago. It has to do with culture. And I'm thinking of culture of this tournament. The culture of any organization is shaped by the worst behavior the leaders are willing to tolerate. What a great quote. Is that true in your business? Is it true in your family or wherever association you may have? That the culture of any organization is shaped by the worst behavior the leaders are willing to tolerate? Well, let me give you a little context. We've been doing this tournament for 12 years. When it started, Nick said, who was our son, who started, who had been living with cancer for a year, decided that it was time that we gave back. And he said, let's make this tournament di different. First of all, I believe that every girl that participates in this tournament should leave feeling that they had fun and that they're a winner. Now that's the difference, you know, there's winners. He says, if you've learned, you're a winner, no matter what. And he says, so let's give a shirt to every girl. Let's make sure that every girl that participates leaves with a shirt. See, it's usually just for the first team and the second team, you know, first and second place. But in our tournaments, every girl leaves with a shirt. It's been a different color each year, so we know which year they were here by the color of the shirt. And we've seen them on both coasts now. Think about it, 12 years, 300 times 12, or more than 300 times 12 around. You know, so that's a lot of shirts. It's so cool. So how did that attitude change? Well, I think the, way that, the reason the attitude was there is because of the way that Nick made it. And so he would gather each team when they were eliminated together and he would tell them, thank you for participating in this tournament. And he would let them know that they're special. He would let them know that he considered them winners and that they're winners by, by the fact that they've learned while they're here. Now, after Nick was gone, we tried to continue that on and we continued it on the next year, but the coaches and some of the families, and some, they started getting too competitive. And that spirit was gone. And the only thing we could think about was Nick was gone. Why would that be gone? And Lori was ready to quit. She was only take so much complaints coming her way and their complaints about pity, you know, uh, petty things, you know, about strikes and balls and umpires and, and really getting mad. I mean, really upset. She said, I've had it, I've done. But then she turned around when the girls would come to her and beg her to have it. And the umpire said, this is our favorite tournament. The girls got it. See, what can we do to make this tournament better, to bring back that spirit? So she reached out to her cancer, her, her cancer community and she attached, assigned a cancer cutie to each team. So that each team had a cancer cutie that they got to play for. Some of these teams, because depending on the health of the cancer cuties, some of these cancer cuties might have been former uh, cancer patients that are in remission. They might have been somebody that's in a different stage or in treatment or fourth stage or even terminal. We've had several angels. We've had six angels just in the last year. That's tough. That's really tough. But you know, they, they gather around these, these cancer cuties and they do everything for them and their parents love it. Their family loves it. The, the families, the, the players love it. And how do, you, how do you start arguing about petty things when you have that kind of an environment? So we talk about culture. Now, what happens if a coach steps out of line? Well, the culture of any organization is shaped by the worst behavior that the leaders are willing to, to tolerate. So we've had to ask coaches to leave. We put arms around them, said, coach, you have, must leave, your girls can stay, and we'll have a good talk and explain why. And maybe, just maybe, we might let them back in, but it's going to take a little bit to get them to come back in. And as a result of that, the coaches and the players and the families all know what to expect. And I'm telling you, if you had a dry eye multiple times during our tournament, when you start seeing the attachments and the meaningfulness and what happens, uh, then, then there's something wrong with you. 
it's a, it's an amazing experience. Are these girls competitive? You bet they are. Are they some of the greatest athletes I've seen? Do they want to win? You bet they do. But they still start early on designing their uniform specifically for this tournament because they know that it's special. And it's a special feeling. I'm asking you, does the culture of any organization truly, truly shaped by the worst behavior the leader's willing to tolerate? Think about it in terms of your business. Think about, about the things that you're involved in, your family and otherwise. Ask yourself, how can this be meaningful for you? Have a meaningful week. Have a meaningful month. I'll be willing to talk to you. I'm excited. I'm always willing to talk to you. I'm excited to talk to you next week. Bye-bye.